Welcome to the Red Blizzard Podcast. Back once again. And we're going to dub this show Sipping with the Biz. You know, I'm going to try to do one of these like once a week. And we're just going to basically talk about what's going on in the world. Whether it's sports, politics, celebrity gossip, news, whatever, whatever. subway station in, in Brooklyn and all these stories coming out you know first you hear about you know, the cops say they don't know where he at can't find him you know there's a hunt out for him but first of all he looked suspicious when he got to the subway Come up in there, he got on a construction uniform. You know, construction uniform, got a big ass briefcase. Well, not a briefcase, like a carrying case, like a, a traveling case. So get on a subway. And I'm guessing, you know, maybe they, they see things like this often, so they didn't didn't really look at it gave it a second look so he can't get his fat ass through the turnstile so he's looking back you know can you help me this and that got a whole bunch of stuff and it's heavy and you know from what i understand when i when i used to work in transportation like one of the safety protocols that you was like highly start questioning somebody over was if they're carrying something that were, that's like real heavy like that they can hardly move like like a backpack a carrying case or something and that's that's a red flag right there you know you got to start asking that dude some questions like hey you know where you going what you doing and if you have to hey you know what you got in there But, you know, it's, you know, we live in this age of, you know, everybody's so hyper and ultra sensitive about everything. So a lot of times, see, now you got the, you got the police scared to even do stuff like that because they're going to be deemed as racist, which, first of all, to any police officers out there just listening to this, listening to this podcast, You know yourself better than anybody else can possibly ever know you. Either you are racist or you're not. If you're not, stop worrying about what everybody thinks. You got to make snappy decisions in your line of work. A lot of times those decisions, you know, you got to use those decisions to protect yourself and and the public so do what you think is right fuck all this ultra woke bullshit do what you think is right in this situation if you if officers i don't know if they saw this guy but you know a side note to this why why is it so convenient Why, when shit like this happened there's no working cameras in the area like in the subway there were no working cameras at the time so they caught this guy basically because he gave himself up what was he eating at mcdonald's or some shit one of the last you know mcnugget or something this fat fuck But yeah, do y'all y'all need to do what y'all think is right. And if you are racist and you're a cop, you gotta hold 
another set of problems and issues that you need to deal with yourself. And you probably should have dealt with that before you put a badge on, but that's that's a story for another day. But if you're not like that, don't worry about it. Don't you you guys need to stop this bullshit from happening. And the fucking mayor, I don't know where the money is going. All the money that, that was put into the transit system. There should be no non-working cameras in the whole transit system. Especially since there's always reports of crime in, in the subway. Cameras, cameras, you know, this this is my thing. And this is not just New York City. It's a lot of metropolitan cities. Especially Chicago. Where I'm from. It's, it's kind of funny and ironic that, you know, when they want to get speeding tickets, the speeding cameras always work. There's cameras all over the place. They want to get you for jaywalking, they can get you for jaywalking, they got you on camera. But when something serious happens, like this, oh, well, uh, well, what can we do? You know, you know, the cameras wasn't working. You know, sounds suspicious to me, but hey, that's what they say. So you know, I guess we got to roll with it. <laughs> so basically tipsters have whoever tipped them off where the guy was at, which, you know, Mickey D's. Let's read what they got here. This is ABC News. Five tipsters were split $50,000 reward for providing police with information that led to the arrest of the suspect in Tuesday's mass shooting on a New York City train, officials said. So they probably saw him somewhere I heard uh, at a fast food joint thirty hours it took them thirty hours and it, and he turned himself in ten people was shot So why they looking for this dude? He shoots ten people, and it wasn't just a random like, you know, drive-by style, you know, whatever. This idiot let loose some smoke bombs uh, in the subway, so you can't see what's going on, and this idiot just randomly shooting. This could have been a lot worse than what it was. I'm actually, I'm, I'm amazed, surprised, and shocked no one was killed. Which, you know, not to put my tin hat, you know, put my tin hat on, but it just makes me wonder, you know, I mean, no life, threatening injuries in a crowded subway train? Wasn't it in rush hour? You know, I can't... This article I'm reading by ABC, it, you know, I don't know if it was... Yeah, it was during rush hour, 8.30 a.m. Nobody got hit, nobody got in seriously hurt. This this some wild shit.
So here's a here's a quote by Commissioner Sewell, I guess. Frank Robert James had nowhere else to run or hide, and now is in NYP custody. The work of our detectives is second to none, and the dedication of our patrol officers is never ending. First of all, it seems like the public have had a lot more to do with that than the officers did. I mean, the video footage was from passengers that were on that platform. The tips came from civilians, regular people. So all this money, all this government funding that you guys are getting. And listen, I'm not one of those type. I'm not one of them dudes to saying defund the police, nothing like that. But I think I think something needs to be. It needs to be an investigation as far as. These municipal, these uh, police departments getting all this money funded to them. Is it actually going to the police department, or is somebody pocketing this stuff? And that also goes for the mass transit systems around the country. Why there should be no cameras that's not working. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Where, where's this money going? Because it seems like it's obviously not going where it's supposed to. Five good Samaritans who have not been publicly identified will eventually split a combined fifty thousand dollars worth of Crime Stoppers rewards provided by the Police Foundation. The, Met, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority and Transport Workers Union Local 100. So, mm. so I'm, I'm gonna leave this link in the description column. In the description column, you guys can check it out. You know, this is gonna be um. I'm gonna put this on my YouTube channel, Red Blizzard 357. You guys can check this out. As you know, I thought this story was crazy as fuck when it first popped off. I didn't really know what to think about it because you know it wasn't like a regular shooting. The guy had like smoke bombs and shit. So this this shit had to be planned out for a long time. And then you you hear about some of his older videos what he what he put out and this this. This motherfucker it was blatantly racist. Now, yeah, but yeah, for black people, we can be racist too. You know, black people can be racist too. You know, I, I say we so I can, you know, saying so you can get a picture of who you're listening to. But I, I'm realistic about shit, and I'm truthful about shit, and I'm able to be objective about shit. That's the true meaning of the red pill. This motherfucker was blatantly racist. And just listen to his past comments and shit. It's just a whole bunch of nonsense. Pro blackity black, bliggity black, blah, 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 bullshit. And... To the white people today, y'all need to stop over being over being sorry about what happened in the in the past, what your ancestors did in the past. Y'all can't do nothing about that shit. All y'all can do living today is do better and treat people better today. But don't try to overcompensate for what your ancestors did in the past. You can't fix the shit that happened in the past in America. So stop trying to do that. You guys are overdoing it. And what you're getting as a result is the extremism of the left, the liberal left. Like over this, this whole woke culture and cancel everybody because of feelings type bullshit is going overboard. It's like a train 
that has derailed because you guys are overdoing it. You're overcorrecting. It's it's not working. It's, it's what you're doing is flipping. You're flipping the pancake over, and on the other side of the pancake, it looks different, but it's basically the same shit. You're creating another realm of racism, and you're trying to make it seem like it's okay because of what happened in the past, of which you had no control over. You wasn't here, so stop overcorrecting that shit. Leave that shit alone, and. For the black people that's dwelling on that shit and living in that shit, like y'all need to leave that shit alone too. It's not helping anybody. We're not getting forward in any kind of way by dwelling on that and obsessing with it. And I know a lot of white people today, you have that guilt in the back of your conscience and you think you gotta do, oh, I gotta do something, I gotta. Um, then a situation happens and you start overthinking it. Well, if I say this, then he might think that. And, you know, if he thinks that, then eventually he'll think I'm a racist. And you're just, you're putting your brain in a cobra clutch. You know, side note, cobra clutch. Three five seven three, it's my gaming channel. But anyway, yeah, shameless plug. But it is what it is. But uh, yeah, you guys need to stop riding the guilt surfboard. That's what you're doing. You're riding the wave of guilt, and it's creating an unsafe, unhealthy atmosphere. And that's exactly what you see in the news today from the new from news, sports, celebrities. It's all it's like a disease that you that you've let out. Cut it out. So. <laughs> let's get down with the big homie Elon Musk. Yo, I was so happy to hear about, you know, Elon Musk buying shares into Twitter and the things. Because right now, now, let's, let's be honest and fair about it. He's the richest man in the world or amongst the richest men in the world, richest people in the world. So he can buy Twitter a million times over, I'm sure. And a lot of people are afraid that, okay, you know, a man with this much power, a billionaire with this much power, you know, we, we got to stop him while we can because in the future he might make a move or think a certain kind of way that's going to be against the people or counter, counterproductive against the people and then we're going to be in trouble with this and that. And I find this odd and strange that, you know, as long as Elon Musk, if he was to take the path of the liberal left, support the Democratic Party, take take completely take that path, push their talking points, push their narratives, and agree with them, these thoughts would never take place. Nobody would even care, blink an eye, or anything. Anything that Elon Musk would say and do would be glossed over and ignored. But the fact that he has more of a libertarian conservative thought process, process when it comes to Twitter and free speech, now it's a problem. Now he's a tyrant. Now we need to worry about what he may do in the future. He may become a dictator in the future. Now we have to worry, worry, worry. We have to be scared, 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 which is the typical tactic of the left. Worry, worry, worry. Fear, fear, fear. Scared, scared, scared. Oh my God, shit. What the fuck I do? Oh my God, where's the rock I can hide under? And it's amazing how that works, huh? 
It's amazing how that shit works. So Elon Musk offers to, he's at, let's see, he's at about 9% or whatever, and he offered to buy Twitter for $54 billion. Which is double what the stock was worth recently. This was like a few days ago. And the board, the shareholders, from what I'm from what I'm seeing, a lot of them are they're they're for it. They're okay with it. They're like, yeah, okay, let's, you know, let's let's hear them out. But the board is blocking this. So if the board throws a monkey wrench in this program. And Elon pulls out and he pulls his shares out and he tanks and he tanks the stock as a result. Can't those shareholders sue the board? Uh, I'm, just, I'm, no, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm asking an open question. I think they can. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think they can. And now, as of five hours ago, according to Fox Business, by Caitlin McPhail, Elon Musk agrees with tweets saying game is rigged if he can't buy Twitter. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave this link in the description column. Also, <laughs> Elon Musk's tumultuous bid to buy Twitter continued Saturday, when the Tesla CEO took to the social media platform to back claims. That the game is rigged if his attempt if his, if his attempts fail. Well we kinda already knew the game was rigged. I mean as soon as he took this stance this conservative libertarian stance. That right there put a target on his back. That right there put a target on his back. Let me see, because even the DOJ came out and let me see. We're gonna look this up right quick. Okay, this is it right here. Okay, as of April 15th, 2022, This was posted by Lizzie Murica. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Leave that alone. It's probably a, you know, 
an acronym for, I mean, not an acronym, but uh, I doubt if that's the last name, but the story is true because multiple sources are reporting this. Reports surfaced that SEC and DOJ launched an investigation into Elon Musk after Twitter offer. How ironic. Now, I'm willing to bet, I'm, I'm going to leave this, uh, I'm going to leave this link in the description section too. I'm willing to bet that if he was left-leaning, this would not be taking place. They would not care. As long as their agenda and their liberal woke ways and propaganda is being spewed, they would have no problem at all. They would probably be investing in Tesla, co-signing on everything Elon Musk says, and everything would be fine. But because he's not talking that same BS on the liberal side because he's in favor of freedom of speech it's it's a problem oh no we can't have that the richest man in the world is is not a liberal we have to find a way to attack him and right on time just a coincidence? Hmm. It's a good ass question. Is he Murka? I agree. Is it just a coincidence? Step down here some more. Washington, D.C., on the heels of billionaire Elon Musk offer to buy Twitter, the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Department of Justice are reportedly launching a joint investigation into Musk. This is interesting timing. I agree. You know what? I'm just going to leave this link in. I'm going to leave this link in the description section. Because this, is, this just goes to show you right now with the agenda of the liberal left, the woke left, and the Biden administration all lockstep together in the same bed, socialism, Nazism, suppressing freedom of speech, and unless you agree with them, then you can say and do whatever you want. Remember the guy in Wisconsin that decided, hey, there's a bunch of white people down there. Let me just drive my SUV down this parade route and just run some people over for no reason. Yeah, the media glossed over that and quickly decided to divert our attention elsewhere. Oh, there's nothing to see over here. Yeah, no, there's nothing to see over here. Look over here. It's some other stuff going on. Hey, you know, there's some little toys over here you guys want to look at. Check this out. Yeah, how convenient. How convenient. But yeah, this. This is a tweet by David Sachs. If the game is fair, Elon will buy Twitter. If the game is rigged, there will be some reason why he won't be able to. We're about to find out how deep the corruption goes. Shit, you're damn right. And Elon co-signed it. Indeed. you damn right we're about to find out, one way or another. And currently, at the time of this story, let's see this. Okay. At the time of the tweet, when Elon responded, it was April 16th, 2022. Uh, David Sachs' tweet was April 14th, 2022. So around that time, 
Twitter stock was trading at about 4508. It's down, you know, 0.77. It was, it was down uh, 1.68 percent. So it's, it's kind of teetering from a little bit negative to, to breaking even to going into the green, and that's because of Elon Musk. His next move. What is he gonna do? If he decides to withdraw his stock. His, his shares. Twitter Twitter's stock was going to drop like a brick. And all the woke liberal left that works for Twitter, uh, they scared to death right now. Go ahead and be scared, fuckheads. Go ahead and be nervous. Go to the DMV and change your names to Nervous Nandy. Fuckers. You should be worried. Should have never partook in this stupid ass shit anyway. Oh, ultra woke. Oh, if you're not woke, then you're... Something's wrong with you. Well, I guess something's wrong with me then. So be it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that shiznit. Lighten up the mood a little bit. On some, what's going on here? Well, according to the Mirror, which is basically probably a gossip magazine. But gossip is basically the smoke. And you know what they say about the smoke, where there's smoke, there's fire. Maybe or maybe not, allegedly, we don't know. Rihanna's designer breaks silence over vile ASAP Rocky cheating rumors. Okay. I mean, she shouldn't give a fuck. She's a billionaire. I mean, he shouldn't either because he, you know, he rich and shit. He can do what he want. And my thing is this. This this article was done by uh, Zoe Delaney. So I'm going to leave this link in the description. You guys can check it out for yourself if you want to read it. But my thing is this. All right. She's a billionaire. He's, he's a multimillionaire. You know, they don't need each other financially so now basically it comes down to personality wise you know do we get along do we like being around each other do we like each other like that when you subtract all the money set it to the side and shit you know whatever businesses we might be in business together doing some all the business shit you set that to the side do we like each other is what it comes down to because I tell you straight up if we rich and we don't get along and we kind of secretly hate each other or you know like it appears that jada has that for will smith but that's just another story for another day then you know money be damned it's just not gonna work And he probably let her know, like, yeah, you got way more money than me, but pff, I can still get bitches. Don't, don't get that fucked up at all. So, and she probably, she probably know that shit. That's probably one of the things she like about him. Everybody else probably bowed down to her, like, oh, oh yes, Rihanna, what, what else do you want? Oh, oh my, oh, can I shine your toenails for you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for blessing me, Rihanna, with your presence. <laughs> Come on now. This motherfucker bleed once a month like any other woman. <laughs> but, like I said, that's probably what she like about him. But a lot of people don't understand that. So they want to throw throw salt, throw sideways salt at them and shit. 
And supposedly this is from, you know, uh, Rihanna's designer came out and said, what song was, was she talking about? Rihanna's designer has confirmed the singer and her partner, ASAP Rocky, are still very much together. After unfounded reports and speculation, the parents-to-be had split due to cheating. Take it to Instagram on Friday. Shoe designer, Amina Madai. I'm going to say it like that. I uh, apologize if I mispronounced it. You know. Uh, caught the affair rumors malicious and denied any suggestion she had conducted an affair with the rapper behind the pregnant singer's back. The Paris-based designer designer statement comes after the internet was flooded with unfounded rumors and reports surrounding the state of mom-to-be Rihanna's relationship with the father of her unborn child. Well, sounds like another example of people just throwing salt at the wall and seeing what happens. If it bruises the paint fixture, if it bruises the paint on the wall, I just made that up. So just, just rock with it. Throwing salt, just throwing salt on motherfuckers. Couldn't wait for the wedding and throw rice. I had to throw salt early, you know. You know just saying. Now, hey. More power to ASAP. If he did, allegedly, more power ASAP. If he didn't, more power, more power ASAP. Yo, salute. He with Rihanna, and a lot of this is rooted in jealousy anyway. People on the outside looking in, you know, they don't, they don't know the ins and outs, the inner workings of what's going on in their relationship. And a, and a lot of reasons when people on the outside looking in don't know what you're doing and don't know how you're moving and your relationship status and if it's going good or bad and this and that, they start to make up shit to fulfill their own sick need of validation. Like, a, well, you know, I'm important too. I can create a story and make people believe it, even if it's not true. So, you know, that's neither here nor there. You know, motherfuckers just be on bullshit sometimes. And spreading rumors is their life. Well, according to BuzzFeed, Britney Spears is... Engaged and pregnant again. I mean, ooh, my mistake. Married and pregnant again. Good for her. Yeah. I mean, when you marry somebody that you know been ran through, how happy are you really? I mean... I mean, really? Are you really happy with that decision? Because it sounds suspicious to me. I mean, are you happy with yourself? Should be the question you're asking yourself. To the men out there, if you marry, decide to marry a woman that you know has been ran through, you know this woman was literally the train tracks. And you know what I mean when I say that? You know she was literally the train tracks. Are you really happy? <laughs> Are you really happy with that decision? I'm going to bet you're not. I'm going to bed when you're alone and thinking to yourself about the decision you made 
locked in with this broad and you start thinking, shit, she, you know, how many train cars was on that track at the same time? Was it a subway? Just three or four cars? Or was it a freight train with 200 cars? Or you know those freight trains that get you stuck in traffic and when you, you see it coming, you'd be like, God damn it. And you'd be sitting there for like 20, 30 minutes and shit for, while 200 of those cars slowly cross the road. And you... <laughs> so now you're wondering like, okay, I, I know she was the train tracks, but what kind of train was being run? I'm just saying, just if I know you've been ran through, I will pass, motherfuckers. <laughs> Let's listen to what Miss Stranger, I mean, Miss Spears had to say. I lost so much weight to go on my mo. Moy trip, only to gain it back. I thought, geez, what happened to my stomach? My husband said, no, you're food pregnant, silly. So this was, oh, so obviously she didn't know she was rude. She, she was going through the phases like, oh, am I pregnant? Am I not pregnant? Blah, blah, this and that. And okay, took a pregnancy test. Uh, you're pregnant. Yeah. I obviously won't be going out as much due to the paps getting their money shot of me. You should be used to that by now. I mean, this is what you signed up for. That's that's why to me personally, because, you know, celebrities are human too and shit. And, and I understand, like, that shit will get on your nerve after a while and shit. I don't see how they do it. Like, motherfuckers always shoving cameras up in your face and you... You go outside and shit, and motherfucker hiding in your bushes to take pictures and shit. Like, shit, I can't even motherfucking dig my boogers in peace and shit. Y'all motherfuckers snapping photos, and next thing I know, I'm in motherfucking Gossip Magazine. You know what? Red Blizzard likes to eat boogers. Like, what? 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 Look, I was scratching my nose, you sick fucks. that a bitch <laughs> but yeah i were i mean to me the the best the perfect realm to be in is to be rich and anonymous like if you behind the scenes nobody knows what you look like but you rich you filthy rich you wealthy rich <laughs> you elon musk rich but nobody knows what you look like that means you can go anywhere. Your favorite motherfucking hamburger stand. They got them that classic, you know what I'm saying, hamburger, no, no cheeseburger meat and nice and greasy the way you like it. And you just walk up in there and shit and the, and the, and they open the motherfucking the way it's built inside, they have it look on the inside portion it looks looks like a drive through window on the outside, but you on the inside. And you go up in there and they pull back the screen, not the screen door, which call it the glass door it has like a little handle on it. And you pull it back and then you make your order and shit. And the burger, the hot dog, the chili cheese dog, whatever you, whatever you order, tastes so damn good. Just, ah. Oh. And there's other people in there too ordering food. They look at you, you look like just regular average everyday guy. They have no idea that you're worth 200 billion dollars they have no idea that you're worth 400 million dollars you look like everybody else because you're not famous you're paid like you're famous you're rich like you're famous but you're anonymous that is the perfect way to be in society especially in america 
Because you can go wherever you want. Nobody, you could dress, you know what I'm saying? You could walk through the hood, wear some bummy ass shit, look like you don't have any money. You walk through any hood and shit. Motherfuckers look at you like, nah, this broke ass nigga, we ain't, we don't need to mess with him and shit. What we go? We rob him, what we gonna get? A couple pennies? Yeah. It's because nobody knows who you are. That's perfect. But some of these people and shit, they so addicted to attention and being famous. Like, oh, I gotta be famous. I mean, if you don't have a choice, see, that's another thing. If the only choice you're given is to be, you know, to be average and broke, or to be famous, because with with the fame, you can be rich. A lot of people are gonna choose the fame and shit just just to get to the point of being rich. That's the only reason why a lot of people would choose it. But you have a lot of people that are addicted to attention, so they're gonna choose that anyway. But to me, the the perfect motherfucking slot you can fit yourself in is to be rich and anonymous. Gets no better than that. So I definitely understand the, what Brittany was saying about the paparazzi shit. You know, because, you know, we are human and shit at the end of the day. So, I'll leave that link in the description section too and shit. But I, I know it's a lot of y'all. Y'all out there celebrate Easter, <laughs> you know. Hope you enjoy your little Easter and shit. You know, if you celebrate or whatever you celebrate, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, you know, I don't know what everybody else's uh, holidays are as far as. This this is a big weekend for the Christians. Um, but to everybody, like, whatever you celebrate, you know, whatever you believe in, and whenever, whatever time of year that comes, you know, hey, I salute. To make you a better person, I'm all for it. Learn all about it. some playoff games this weekend for those of you that enjoy the NBA my personal opinion is the refs was doing too much in the Timberwolves Grizzly games just let these just let these brothers ball out and see what happened I mean Another thing that I don't like is, and I just came across is, like the NBA, NFL, MLB, even the NHL. I, I don't watch hockey. I don't really like hockey like that, but they in there too. They're listed in the same category as the WWE, as sports entertainment. And this is so they're protected against antitrust laws and stuff like that. So... My thing is, if it's real sports and real sports competition, why are you worried about antitrust laws? I mean, these guys are actually competing, right? There's no funny business going on, right? Makes you makes you wonder. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I still say Tom Brady's the GOAT. It's the GOAT QB for real. But when you look at that whole scenario with the NFL being listed under sports entertainment, you start to raise one eyebrow like The Rock. Like, oh yeah? <laughs> hmm. And he was a patriot for all those years. So what better way to signify America 
as far as symbolism and being on a stage. We're letting the Patriots win every few years. In some years, back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins. Now, Tom Brady wasn't the most athletic quarterback in the world. He's not even the most accurate in it. He's, he's accurate, but he's not the most accurate in the world. Aaron Rodgers is more accurate than Tom Brady, yet Tom Brady has seven Super Bowl rings. The golden boy of the Patriots. When he retires, he's going to retire a Patriot. He's going to go into the Hall of Fame as a Patriot. It just makes you wonder when you start to put things together, like, like, yo, No, it's sports entertainment, not sports competition. So now you got put. Now you in you enter into like a a contradiction, a quandary of the mind. <laughs> Should I keep watching this sport? I mean, do I like? WWE wrestling? Do I like professional wrestling? Now, I know that's rigged, and I know it's staged, and I know the the winners are predetermined. Am I, do I like it enough to keep watching the WWE? Or do I like the WWE at all? If the answer is no, now, with this new knowledge, do I continue to support and watch professional sports? Because apparently the only thing that makes it professional is the acting involved. Not with the players, because a lot of times, you know, what you go back to the Tim Donahue referee situation. A lot of times it only takes refs to do certain things. Look at the Bears Steelers game on that Monday night. That one play. Um, I forgot the name of the player. He was running off the field. The referee looks at him. The referee pivots into his path so that the player will bump into him. And then the referee throws a flag on the player. It was on it was on blatant display. That moment right there. Sports entertainment, as I use air quotes, was on blatant display right there. As far as the possibility and the probability probability that maybe not only professional sports as a whole could be rigged and fixed, but this individual game right here can be rigged and fixed. It was meant for the Bears to lose that game. And just and anybody that saw that game, Justin Fields is a rookie. Justin, Justin Fields played phenomenal in the second half for the Chicago Bears. The Steelers had, like, I think the fifth-ranked defense at the time. And as a rookie, in the second half, Justin Fields lit their ass up. So as sports fans, as professional sports fans, we got to ask ourselves, yo, what the fuck are we looking at, really, you know? And a lot of times we have a kinship and a love that we develop as when we were kids playing football, baseball, basketball. And most of the time we we take that through our whole life. We take that with us, you know, throughout our whole life, the love for these sports because we participated in them. We develop a, a, a brothership within these sports. And if it's a, a sports league and you get to meet different players from different teams and different areas, you develop friendships and stuff that can last a lifetime, all because of that sport. So you know, we take that love into our adulthood and we start watching professional sports with the kinship and attachment of when we play the same sports as, as kids. 
not realizing that, you know, with, th with this new information, we might be watching, you know, we're watching the Super Bowl. But if you were objective about it, what's the difference between the Super Bowl and WrestleMania? It's a un un very uncomfortable question to be asked. And the answer is probably equally uncomfortable. But what can I say? It's just a thought. It's just a thought. Me personally, I would be extremely disappointed and I would be I would be kind of angry and shit. And I know a lot of these sports leagues are they're trembling right now. They're they're like definitely afraid of that scenario of the paying public realizing that okay, you guys are listed under sports entertainment in the same category as professional wrestling. So now we need to look at you guys like okay, all these years we've been wasting our money patronizing your product. Maybe we should start keeping our money in our pockets. That includes buying merchandise, buying tickets to games, watching games on TV. That would be catastrophic to these leagues. And in the back of their mind, I know they lose sleep at night thinking about that. Especially since they probably don't think that a lot of people are going to connect those dots, you know, that these leagues are listed in the same category as the WWE. And we all know what the WWE is. We all know that that is rigged and stuff like that. The injuries are real. The injuries are real. Because some of that stuff, you got to get hurt to perform. So, but overall... You know, having matches predetermined who's going to win. And you put that thought process on professional sports, that kills professional sports completely. What happened is the new professional sport, because people will be like, you know, well, we, why watch the pros is fixed. So people will start falling back into college. Now, college is only one degree of separation from sports anyway. So... If those games are not in the same category as professional sports as far as being rigged and all altered and you know fixed, if you will, they're they're on their way to it. So what will end up happening is people are gonna people that really love sports, they're gonna revert all the way back to high school. That's gonna be the new professional sport. That's going to be the new, you know, as far as being the purest form of sport, like the purest in its nature. Because teenagers are higher headed. So even if you come with them with that bullshit, you know, there's a good chance they're going to change their mind and be like, nah, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. You can't, you know, so... You know, and then if it gets to the point where that's not the case, then another problem, another can of worms that people won't want to deal with and don't want to hear about and probably are afraid to discuss what, you know, whether it's now or even in the future. What happens when people with deep pockets decide to start paying high school athletes? Hey, you're. You know, you're a blue chipper anyway. If you throw this game, I'll give you $300,000. That's another rabbit hole that a lot of sports fanatics and sports fans might not want to think about, but might need to think about. But sure.
that's it for this week's episode of Sipping with the Biz, with the Blizz. Keep saying Biz, because my childhood uh, favorite rappers was Biz Marquis. R.I.P. to Biz, you know. Very entertaining brother, very skillful brother. But sipping with the blizz once a week. We're going to try to get this popping. And I'm going I'm to put all these uh, links in the description section on YouTube. You guys can check out what I was talking about if you want to. You know, uh, Red Blizzard 357 on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. Support the content. You can hit, hit the cash app. Cobra Clutch 357. And this concludes this week's episode. Enjoy y'all Easter. Holla.